How many learners learn from this? This is assessment of human performance, assignment one on health screen. So today I'm going to discuss four methods of health screen, informed consent, PARQ, PHHQ, and health monitoring tests. So first of all, the informed consent is a legal document in, and it describes what is involved in the training program. So what type of exercise we're going to be doing, whether it be flexibility, cardiovascular, resistance training. It describes the degree of supervision, whether you're going to be working one-to-one -one or with other clients in a class environment, or we're going to set you away on a goal and you work individually and I'll check up on you later in the session. It describes the risks and benefits of participation in the six weeks program, so what you will get out of it. It also has in the cancellation and emergency procedures, so it will describe where the meeting points are in the facilities you're going to be using, and it says to speak to the exercise professional if you wish to cancel. It also has respons responsibilities of the client, so it is up to you to disclose any information that may change during the exercise program. This being a legal document is signed and dated and this is to protect the exercise professional. So we've got a PARQ form which is seven questions and these seven questions are to seven questions are self check, self checks on vital organs, joints and medical history and that is to see whether they currently have any problems or they had any problems in the past. If they tick no to all the questions, then they are ready to take part in physical activity. If they select yes to one or more of the questions, then they must seek medical referral. This also has some demographic information, such as the height, weight, gender, their address, the date of birth, and any doctor's information, so what, where the doctors are and what, what their name is. It's signed and dated, and this is to protect the exercise professional. The health history questionnaire is a questionnaire, and this requests in more detail an analysis of what you would like to know from, as the exercise professional from your, your client. So you can tailor this, and it finds out any goals that you want to get out of the, out of the six weeks program, or maybe in the long term. It can find any family history which is any chronic diseases or anything hereditary that could be passed to your client. It can find out any physical activity that they used to do or they're currently doing. Um, diet, their sleep, any habits like smoking or alcohol consumption, we can find out. This is also, we'll have on demographic information like the PARQ and it's signed and dated to protect the exercise professional. So I've got four health monitoring tests that I'm going to discuss. Blood pressure, peak flow, rest and heart rate, and the waist to hip ratio. These tests are to find diseases at an early stage before there are any symptoms, and you must verbally discuss these tests with the client before administering. So first of all, we have the blood pressure test, and this is to check whether the client is at risk of being at high or low blood pressure. It takes two readings of pressure on the vessels. This is systolic and diastolic. Systolic is the pressure of the heart, the pressure on the vessels while the heart is beating, and diastolic is the pressure on the vessels while the heart is relaxed. The best time to take this test is in the morning before any food or drink consumption which can affect your heart rate. The before administering the test, you must check for consent because it is a hands-on test and the client position must be seated or lay down, relaxed and not speaking. You get the arm out right and you place the cuff over the arm, above the elbow so you can still move it as so. You pump up the cuff to restrict the flow and you would take the test three times and this is for reliability. The normal readings for average adult is 120 over 80 and anything over 140 or over 90 must be medically referred. So next we've got the peak flow test, and this is to, to measure the maximum lung capacity, specifically on the expiration. So 
before this testing was demonstrated to the client, so you would take the peak flow monitor, tell them to stand up, feet shoulder width apart, and take a deep breath in and a quick hard blow out into the mouthpiece. You take this test three times and you take the highest reading because you're trying to look for the maximum lung capacity. With this, the average scores are between 400 and 700 for an average adult. And anything over 700 is great because we're looking for a maximum here and anything below 400 would seek medical referral. So the rest and heart rate test, this tests for how many beats per minute the heart can do at resting level. So the best results is to take this in the morning, again before any food or drink consumption that can affect your heart rate. We will relax for five, get the client to relax for five minutes before the test to get the heart rate right down because we're trying to get it from the resting level. Before we're administering the test, check for consent because it's a hands-on approach. You will be getting the client to seat, be seated. Sorry. You get the client to be seated and relaxed, and you would take your middle finger and the index finger and rest it on the radial artery at the wrist. You would take these readings. Um, you would count how many reading, you would count how many beats per 10 seconds and then multiply this by 6. And this will get the re reading of beats per minute, beats per minute, and the average adult would be between 60 and 90 beats per minute. It would be different for males and females, females being slightly higher, 70 and 90, and males 60 to 80. Anything over 90 will be seeked for medical referral for high blood pressure. Waist to hip, for the waist to hip ratio, this measures the body fat around the abdominal region. Before administering the test, you must check for consent. This is a hands-on approach. You're going to need a stretch resistance tape, and you're going to be placing this around the body horizontally. You're going to take two measurements. One is going to be on the waist, which is going to be slightly below the navel and slightly above the iliac crest. You would take this measurement twice, and if it differs between one centimetre, you must take it again. You must take the reading on the, re on the end of an expiration. Then you would take a hip measurement, which is on the widest point around the buttocks. After taking these, to get the ratio, you must divide the waist measurement, get the waist measurement, divide the hip by it, which would give you your ratio. Averages differ for genders, so anything over one for a female would need to be medically referred, and anything over 0.95 for males would need to be referred. So when comparing these tests, I found that for the peak flow, rest and heart rate, and waist to hip, we can use these, they're quite simple and effective, they're very minimal equipment. It's, but I found with the rest and heart rate that, as a weakness, this can be done by most blood pressure monitors, which will get rid of human error, and with blood pressure you have the, an accurate reading, which of course minimizes human error. We got the, with waist to hip, there is a weakness which is unreliable because some sports people have different body compositions as you aren't going to get the same result from a male rugby player as you are with a female gymnast. With peak flow, it's not as accurate as other lung, lung function tests with, because it only measures the maximum and obviously the effort can affect the outcome so you really need to make sure your client is putting in maximum effort with that one. For the other health screening methods, I seen that in ParQ, HHQ and informed consent are all signed and this is to pre protect your exercise professional, whereas the health monitoring tests, HHQ and ParQ can be used to pinpoint problems and find room for improvement. The ParQ and HHQ, however, these are self-assessment, unlike the health monitoring tests, so the client do need to know their own body. The weaknesses of the informed consent, unlike the PARQ, HHQ and health monitoring tests, 
because it doesn't actually find anything out from the client. So I made two health screening tests and gave them out to two separate sports people, Pete and Evie. Both, both very different, one male and one female, 47 and 23. Both take part in two different sports, running and dancing. With the PARQ, we got different answers. Both ticked yes to one or more questions. Evie ticked yes to whether being prescribed medication by her doctor was a contraceptive pill, but I would still need her to check with her doctor that it's okay for her to exercise on, on this medication. Pete, however, answered yes to three of these, and I would need to go away to the GP and get a medical clearance for it. So, going more into detail with this, I noticed that Evie suffers with asthma, which is controlled by an inhaler. Both have previous injuries which are related to their sports specific fields, and they, which are both quite similar. They both suffer with pains in the knees and shin splints. They both had previous surgeries, and I noticed with this one, Evie's being a student dancer, she is constantly exercising, whereas Pete has an office based occupation, so he's in a sedentary role, which could affect his sport performance. They both include some sort of physical activity in their recreational activities and I noticed that they both exercise over the required amount by the ACSM guidelines. They both average on six hours sleep per night. One, however, Evie, drinks, drinks 15 plus units of alcohol per week and smokes 30 cigarettes, mainly on a weekend, whereas Pete is a non-smoker and rarely drinks alcohol. I looked at room for improvement here, and so the ACSM give basic recommendations of 150 minutes of, av of exercise for the average adult. However, this is just to maintain health and decrease a risk of chronic disease. They also recommend resistance training, flexibility and neuromotor training two to three times per week. For Pete, I would increase his hours per week. And I've changed the ergonomics in which he works, so just advise him to be up on his feet a bit more in the office, try and get five minutes to go for a walk, and that would reduce the time spent doing flexibility training. He could focus on strength training and advise him to train two to three times a week on each major muscle group, training on two to four sets, eight to twelve reps. The NHS recommend that nobody drinks, no adult drinks over 14 units of alcohol and spread throughout the week. So I'd advise Evie to reduce her alcohol consumption on, and spread it throughout the week and not focus it more on the weekend. The National Sleep Foundation state that for an average adult is 7 to 9 hours per week. So I would advise both Evie and Pete to increase their sleep per night. Thank you. Okay, well done.